Rebuttal to Bev and the Try Thinking on the Level Crew, Round 3.4, Saragaki's Jabberwocky. Jabberwocky is a nonsense poem written by Lewis Carroll and included in his book, Through the Looking Glass. It is loved by English teachers and hated by English students all across the globe. I would have enjoyed it better as a child had it lacked the first and last stanza. What boy doesn't like tales of slaying monsters with just a sword? In this video, I will present and analyze two proofs, which I have named Saragaki's Jabberwocky. It all started with an earlier proof where Saragaki attempted to prove that all verticals are parallel. Unfortunately, he used horizontal and vertical, terms that are not defined in Euclidean geometry. Remove these labels and the proof is perfectly valid and sound and can be summarized, coplanar lines perpendicular to a straight line are parallel. I suspect Saragaki might not be experienced in writing proofs because the conclusion, which took him nine statements, can be arrived at in three statements. Here's my version, which would earn my former geometry students full credit. Saragaki's failure here is a mere foreshadowing of what's to come, for it was six months ago that I thoroughly dissected his proof and yet he didn't learn from the experience. Ah, Discord. A place, just like in front of the TV, where people can go to turn their minds off. I posted a message in agreement with Brad the Science Guy after he was having a conversation with Saragaki about horizontal and vertical. Saragaki quoted me, writing, horizontal is perpendicular to vertical, full stop, no exceptions, asking how I can't see me contradicting myself. This is in reference to my rebuttal video number three, where I said, vertical is aligned with plum, horizontal is perpendicular to vertical, full stop, no exceptions. So I suggested Saragaki go back and rewatch it. He replied, no exceptions, but also exceptions. So I asked him to name the exception, but all he can do was repeat my quote. This went back and forth, and he reposted his big pair of proofs, which he'd sent to me twice about a week earlier. He quoted me again and again. This is one of the frustrating aspects of discussing things with flat earthers, the copy and pasting in lieu of actual thinking and responding. I explained myself yet again, and I asked him to name the exception he thinks there is to the horizontal is perpendicular to vertical rule. He posted his proofs again for a total of four times. He again quoted me and accused me of ignoring his proof, not realizing that I'd actually made a careful study of it days earlier. I again asked for the exception he's claiming to the rule. He replied, what about there? where I specifically outlined the exceptions and posted his proofs for a fifth time. I again asked how it could be evidence of an exception to the rule, which I repeated to him. Start with plumb, aka vertical, and then any plane or line constructed perpendicular to that vertical will be horizontal. No exceptions, full stop. I ended with yet another request for an exception to the rule. Over one month later. He posted the proofs again, and he suggested that I was never going to deal with it. So I promised to make his proofs the topic of my next video, the one you're now watching. He posted some absurdity in the structure of a conditional if-then statement, and I called it the logic of imaginometry register trademark. He suggested that I not show the proofs to anyone who, well, anyone else who knows the Earth as a globe, for it would induce nutsackings. It's not clear how being exposed to an absurd pair of proofs known as Saragaki's Jabberwocky could have such an effect. We shall see. Here's Saragaki's proofs in full. He has a nice diagram with a circle and six lines lettered A through F. He has a section with definitions and axioms. He has proof number one in the lower left and proof number two in the lower right. Okay, let's start with the diagram. He's labeled five of the right angles with letters alpha, beta, gamma, delta, and epsilon, but he never references these angles in his proofs. He also uses the right angle symbol and indicates the angles measure 90 degrees, which is redundant. I suspect he took a screenshot from GeoGebra. Next is his method of labeling lines. Normally points are labeled with capital letters, while lines are done with lowercase italics, as shown in this example. 
When I'm teaching geometry, I prefer to use lowercase cursive letters like Ray L in this illustration. None of my count criticisms here are deal breakers. They're simply used as evidence that Saragaki isn't actually familiar with illustrating geometric proofs. Next, we'll discuss his definitions and axioms. His word horizontal would certainly, his definition of the word horizontal, would certainly raise eyebrows by any mathematician or geometry teacher, or even by one of my former high school students, as this definition doesn't appear to have anything to do with geometry. And it turns out he copied it word for word from Merriam Webster. One reason why dictionaries should never be used in a geometric proof is that each term has multiple definitions in the English language, each of which is context dependent. Saragaki wants us to ignore all the other definitions that don't match his purpose. We don't want any mention of earth and sky or horizontal mergers in business. Not only that, but it looks like he literally copied and pasted it, since the word LEVEL is in all caps and there's an extra space before the colon. In my classroom, copying without attribution earns a student a failing grade. But now let's focus on the content of this definition and see if it's appropriate for a geometric proof. The words operating, horizon, and level are not defined in Euclidean geometry, so we can eliminate those. Technically, neither is a baseline, but we'll keep that as we'll see in a few seconds. This proof clearly takes place in a single plane, as, as with all of Euclid's Book 1, so the use of in the plane of is redundant. So we're left with a simplified definition of horizontal, parallel to a baseline, such as the x-axis in the xy plane, or simply the bottom of the diagram. I want to emphasize that neither baseline nor horizontal are defined in Euclidean geometry, but for the purpose of this exercise, we'll give Saragaki a pass for the moment. Now let's examine Saragaki's definition of vertical. Would it surprise you to learn that he copied this one, word for word, from one of the many definitions of vertical in Merriam-Webster? He says it's perpendicular to the plane of the horizon, which is technically true in the real world, but makes no sense in a geometric proof, as geometry has no horizon. Eliminating that, we turn to primary axis, which also doesn't exist in Euclidean geometry. But we have to keep something, so and we'll interpret this as the x-axis in the xy plane, which we called the baseline in our previous definition. So our final definition of vertical is perpendicular to the primary axis or baseline. Let's update our definition of horizontal to match. Again, neither horizontal or vertical is defined in Euclidean geometry, but we'll give Saragaki just enough rope to, well, you know. Okay, let's look at the rest of these definitions, which are defined in Euclidean geometry. But here's a question for you, Saragaki. If they're defined in Euclidean geometry, why copy their definitions here? It doesn't make your proof any more valid and is problematic in that you're lumping two terms which are not defined in Euclidean geometry, horizontal and vertical, with terms which are not recommended. Furthermore, your definition of plane includes the word superficies, which is considered an archaic way of saying surface. A surface is a two-dimensional shape which can be planar, also known as a plane, or curved, such as the superficies, or surface, of a sphere. Using dead vocabulary doesn't make you sound more intelligent, Saragaki. It only serves to obfuscate your message. If you want to say surface, say surface. If you want to say plane, say that. Next, we move to the axioms. Again, these are Euclidean, and there's no need to redeclare them in a proof, unless one wanted to refer to them by number, which Saragaki never did. They are based on first principles, and it doesn't make your proof more sophisticated by including them. Worse yet, axiom number 10 literally has no bearing on the content of this proof, so why include it? We're now ready to dive into Saragaki's two proofs. Now that we've clarified appropriate geometric definitions for horizontal and vertical, to be parallel or perpendicular to the baseline of the diagram. Let's start with proof number one. It starts promisingly enough, identifying A, B, and C as horizontal parallel lines, remembering that Saragaki's definition of horizontal is parallel to a baseline. He then identifies D, E, and F 
as vertical lines perpendicular to the horizontal ones. Remember that the appropriate definition here is perpendicular to a primary axis, which is the bottom of the diagram. Here's where things go off the rails a little bit. The Jabberwock sinks his teeth and claws into poor Saragaki and won't let go. Before we continue, let's review what a conditional statement is. It starts with a hypothesis after the word if and has a conclusion after the word then. In a true conditional statement, if the hypothesis is true, then the conclusion must be true. For example, if a jellyfish is a typewriter, then Saragaki must deposit $1 million into my bank account. The hypothesis is false, so Saragaki owes me nothing. Next, we have a Boolean hypothesis, which uses AND to evaluate to true only if both parts are true. If a jellyfish is a typewriter and a fish is a bicycle, then Saragaki must deposit $2 million into my bank account. Again, since either of these hypotheses are false, actually both are, and then Saragaki's funds are safe. Lastly, we have compound conclusions, which is just a shorthand way of saying if the hypothesis is true, then two different conclusions will be true. If a jellyfish is a typewriter and a fish is a bicycle, then Saragaki must deposit $2 million into my bank account and he must dress up as an Egyptian pharaoh. Again, none of the hypotheses are true, so both Saragaki's money and dignity are safe. So now let's take a look at the next part of Saragaki's proof. Just look at it. He has a Boolean hypothesis using AND, which means both of must be true for the conclusions to be true. He writes that a horizontal is a line tangent to a circle. This is clearly false according to his own definition of horizontal as being parallel to a baseline. Next, he goes on to write that a vertical is a radius extending past the circumference of the circle. Again, this is false, violating his own definition of being perpendicular to a primary axis. By simple logic, this means that both his conclusions are false. Lines B and E are not both vertical, and lines A and F are not both horizontal. Unfortunately, Saragaki is not very skilled in logic, so he incorporates both these false conclusions into his proof. He continues on as if nothing happened, and then later discovers a contradiction. He concludes the absurdity of the situation with a phrase never before seen in geometry in a geometry proof in the history of geometry proofs. This is absurd. Let's review a valid method of mathematical proofs, proof by contradiction. This method is simple. Take the proposition to be proved and start with the premise that it is false. If this leads to a contradiction, then the premise must be true. The most popular example of proof by contradiction is the proof that the square root of 2 is irrational. The proof starts with the premise that root 2 is rational instead and proceeds from there. This leads to a contradiction. So it appears he believes he's doing a proof by contradiction, but in true Saragaki style, he doesn't realize that his two final conclusions are neither valid nor sound. His first conclusion is that horizontal cannot be a line tangent to a circle. Yet his own definition of horizontal was parallel to a baseline, meaning both lines A and C are parallel to the baseline, horizontal, and tangent to the circle. Ouch. His next conclusion is that vertical cannot be a radius extending past the circumference of a circle. Again, using his own definition of vertical as perpendicular to a primary axis, we see line E is a radius extending past the circumference, aka a secant, Saragaki. I know you don't like that, that word, haha. -ha. Line E is also vertical. Thus, the second conclusion is false, based on Saragaki's own definitions and diagram. Let's bring in proof number two and compare. The colored bands are the parts of the two proofs which are identical, so we'll save some time in our, re in our refutation of proof two. Remember the green highlighted compound hypothesis was made up of two false statements joined with AND, and the conclusions are both false. So let's take a look at how absurd they are and how Saragaki proceeds as if nothing was wrong. He's literally concluding that horizontal line B is somehow vertical, 
and then he concludes that vertical line F is somehow horizontal. And then, just like in proof number one, he uses these obviously false conclusions as if they were true. Ouch, Saragaki. As Quantum Eraser might say, that's going to leave a mark. Cargo Cults Imagine you're in a jungle tribe in one of the countless Pacific Islands, and you notice a bunch of men in uniforms are building landing strips and buildings. This pleased the gods, and soon cargo came from the sky. When the war was over, the men in uniforms went away, so you and your tribe decide to appeal to the cargo gods by imitating what you saw, including building airplanes out of wood and bamboo. The key with a cargo cult is the belief that something valuable can be obtained through mimicry. Imitation isn't just flattery. They believe it will actually lead them to the results that they seek. You cannot receive deep space radio signals by building a radio telescope out of straw, even if it looks a lot like a real telescope. I cannot become king of Egypt by doing a little cosplay. You cannot prove much of anything by making geometric proofs that only resemble actual proofs, such as this one, uh, which tries to prove something about real-world verticals, or the two proofs that we covered in this video, which use terms undefined in Euclidean geometry and then immediately <laughs> ignore those definitions uh, to create contradictions out of thin air. It's a cargo cult of Euclidean geometry. Write something that looks like a proof, and maybe the gods of geometry will smile down upon you. Hey, Sarah Gacky, there's no shame in admitting you don't know, as I said in my last video. But it is folly to argue against knowledgeable people from your position of ignorance. You may fool people who know as little as you, but you will look foolish to everyone else. If you like this content, please give it a like and share. And as always, special thanks to my channel members. And when commenting on this or any other one of my videos, please be kind to each other. Bye.